So well, here it is, the 25 foot accent wall right here in my living room and I really like the way that it came out. I like the way that we broke up these panels where we have the small, wide, small, wide, and so on, because it separates the two living areas of this entire space. This is a 25 foot wall. So it's kind of weird. We never did a wall this long. It's just kind of awkward, but I think what we did actually worked out pretty good. We're gonna put a circle mirror here where the dining area is inside of that big middle panel. And maybe not anything here, and maybe like a family portrait here or we may put a family portrait there and then some other decor there. But we have options on what we can do because the way that we broke it up. And it looks a lot better when there's actually some furnishings in here. So we got this sofa and I just hung up this chandelier like last week, but if you've seen the videos, you've seen that already. So it looks cool, it looks classy. And that's really what I go for when I come up with this stuff. I don't wanna do anything over the top. I just want it to be like, hey, that looks cool. It creates a good vibe, that's it. So let me answer some of the questions that I've been getting on this build and just generally when I work on my own house, I get these kind of questions. And we'll start with the first one. It's kind of rude, but I don't take anything personal on YouTube. But I know what people are saying. I get the point, but the question goes, and I've got it several times, it's something along the lines of, are you really expecting to get your return on investment for all the stuff you're doing to that cookie cutter house? Ouch. No, I'm just kidding. But that, I get the point. This is a basic house and you really don't see this stuff. People really don't do this stuff to basic houses. But I get to make this into like a lab where I can try out new things. I solved a problem of having this huge wall with no window and it was all beat up in the drywall. You guys saw all that. So there's that part of it. But the other part is this is a cool vibe. Like I mentioned, I get to live with this now. Not everything you do to your house has to be like, well, am I going to get the money back out of this or not? Because if not, I don't want to enjoy myself unless I'm going to get money back. Like I don't live like that. I'm not, I don't have an investor mind on everything I do. I not, I'm not even really an investor. I mean, I invested a little bit in DeWalt just because I knew like when I bought the stock, I bought the stock and then I bought all my tools. So I knew it would go up. So there's that. But yeah, this is just something that I like to do. And I probably will get my money back on this because I did it all myself. For this whole wall, I paid 500 bucks in materials. No, actually it's more like 700 because I did the, uh, the primer and paint. I had to buy that too. So it's like 700 bucks for this right here. I think that's fair. So I really don't have a whole lot in this. So the other question that came up was, why did I pocket screw this together? And I've answered this on other builds in the past. And the reason is the wall is not perfect. So when you pocket screw this stuff together, you're saving a lot of time and effort for the painter later when they're gonna have to sand the styled and rail joints. It's gonna hold better over time and it's gonna be like a face frame quality flush finish there. Because if you ever try to put two one by whatever's on the wall and line them up, you're not gonna have a flush joint. So there's other ways to do it. I used the pure adhesive a couple videos back. Um, I've seen people do it with biscuits and pinch dogs, um, just regular glue and scissor nailing. And I've done things all that, those ways as well. But for this one, I was just like, I wanna see if we can actually pocket screw this 25 foot thing together. So there was that and then some people were asking, since I cut the crown straight in the corners, how am I gonna do that? Well, the crown will continue. We'll just cope it in on both sides. So we'll cope in over there and then we'll cope in over there. And I'll show you guys a video on that. And this, it was the same thing with the baseboard. Um, we actually coped this piece into the existing base. So this is all Windsor one as far as the build of the main wall. And then the crown and the base we're all just local suppliers of stuff that I already purchased for my home. And that, that goes with the rest of the house that we already had all this stuff for. But I really like the profiles. I think they're 
really nice, clean, sharp looking moldings. And if you saw the last video, you know I took a chance on that offset panel molding that I turned it into. It's actually a picture molding. And it's, I mean, look, all the shadow, all the depth, it's really cool. We actually have only had this up for one day and I find myself like hanging out on this couch more than ever because I'm like, this is cool. I mean, it just feels cool to be in here. To be able to do stuff for your own house. We spend so much time doing stuff for other people that when we can actually do something for our own self and our wives, who our wives are really like the people who are like the heroes because they have to deal with the construction and the mess a lot. <laughs> it's cool to have something like, hey, it's kind of getting done in here, even though there's a lot more we have to do. So I don't even want to think about it or talk about it because I'll just get depressed and go look for more tools on Amazon. So anyways, enough about me and my problems. This is how it looks. I really like it. And we'll move on to the next project in the next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.